You are not Logan Paul. The days of these monolith creators that are making millions on YouTube are gone. But that doesn't mean that you won't have a career in being a professional content creator. And in fact, I think it means that there are more content creators right now making a living because they have content creation under their belts. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand how you can too. This is the video on how to approach sponsors for your content. I think a lot of people think that they need to have like a gazillion followers to actually get sponsors or have brand deals on their channels and to be successful on social media or as a content creator. But that's actually not true. And in fact, Harris Hiller has a really good video on the ways that he earns money. I don't know, make a pie chart here. And I think it's a great way to look at your business as a pie chart, which he did. So I've been doing this for just over a decade and making a career out of it. And that is exactly the way that you should look at it. Some people think they have YouTube ads as their primary income, but that's not the case. And in fact, that's really bad to rely on ad revenue or Twitch sponsorships for a sustainable income. You actually need to have a business model around what you were doing. Before you even even draw up a business model, you have to work out who you are. What are you doing on the platforms? Like a lot of people just want to be famous. And if you just want to be famous, unfortunately, this isn't the space for you. You're not going to do well. People can see through that like, like this. We're not stupid. We understand how social media works. We watch a lot of YouTube. You can see if somebody is being false. We're pretty tuned into that. So if your interest in doing any form of content creation is just to be famous, you're going to fail immediately. You need to have a message. You've got to be some passionate about something else or subject matter that is not just being famous for the sake of being famous. You either have to be passionate about music or about live streaming, about video games, about knitting, about dinosaurs. I get so many videos served to me about dinosaurs and sharks because I'm just in that click hole on the algorithm and they are content creators. There's a guy called Clayton. He just does Jurassic Park lore and he is able to make a sustainable living doing that thing because he cares about it and he's passionate about it. So you got to find out who you are, find your passion, find the thing that you are good at talking about. A good tact is ask your friends and be aware if your friends ask you for something in real life, take note of what that thing is. Why are they considering you an authority in that thing? Remember that pie chart that Harris Hiller had up. I don't know, make a pie chart here. Remember all the different ways that you can make money. This video is specifically on how to generate money from sponsors. Sponsors will always pay you more money than what you would receive from any other financial source on your channel. Whatever you think you're making in ad revenue, you could be making five times that if a sponsor was on that particular video. It depends on your size, but generally, if you're getting the viewership that sponsors are interested in, that lump sum of money initially is generally more because they want to speak to your audience. So it's very good to start putting together proposals for clients. And that's why approaching clients is an art and you need to learn how to do it. Before you approach your clients, you need to know what your product is. You need to know what you're selling them. A sponsor is buying something from you. So what are your products? What are your physical products? Do you have banner ads? Do you have shout outs at the beginning of your stream? Do you have a one minute segment? Do you have links in your description? Do you have a pinned comment? Those are all tangible products, firstly on YouTube, but you can find them on versions of them on all different kinds of social media. Is it a product feature on your Instagram profile? You've got to have a way to list those products and make sure that when you're selling them, you itemize them to the client. So I'm going to pull figures up my head here, but like $200 for a tweet or $300 for a squeeze back that you run on your stream every half hour or whatever the case is. And then that's how you come to your total. You need to work out what those products are and what the value of those products are. What the value is, is actually one of the hardest parts of this whole thing. You need to work out what clients are prepared to pay for when it comes to the actual products that you're developing. This isn't a charity exercise. A brand doesn't approach you because they want to help you. They're not a charity organization. They are a for-profit company. And if they give you headsets, they want return on that. They want to be able to quantify the loss that they've had because by giving you a headset, they're losing something and they need to quantify it. I have so many people who are asking me, why can't I get a free computer from Alienware? I'm good at Fortnite. Listen, bro, they don't give a shit if you're good at Fortnite or not. They want to make money from you. They need a return on investment and you need to prove that with your products. In helping you develop your products, you need to realize what the objectives of that company is. They have objectives by giving you hardware or sponsoring you financially for your channel. They've got deliverables that they need to do. There's usually a person, a PR person, a marketing person who is tasked with making sure that their products are getting ample 
eyeballs or ample interest or link follow throughs through social media and, and through your channels. So they're gonna try to get the best price that they can for the most amount of reach or the most amount of exposure or the most amount of whatever the objective is. So if a brand has approached you, a good thing to ask is like, what are your objectives? Is it to sell more product? Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's to draw feet through an event. Sometimes it's to draw a uh, hype around a launch of a title. Sometimes it's to download Braid Shadow Legends. They want downloads, man. So tailoring those products to meet those objectives is very important. And you know your channels, you know your social media outlets better than anybody else. You're the one that can design those. They don't know them. It's just as much as I cannot tell you how to build your platform, they can't tell you how to talk to your audience. It's very important. Somebody who does this very well is Epos Fox. Get subscribed. I really, really love his channel. And one of the things he does have sponsors, but there's a clear differentiation because he's very serious. We trust him as content creators to tell us how how to build our streams in the best way possible. And if there's any kind of confusion as to what's sponsored and not sponsored, he'll quickly lose the integrity that the brands that are trying to buy space on his channel need from him. So he's very quick to work out what is and what isn't sponsorship content, where money can like infiltrate that space. He knows how to compartmentalize his channel. Once you've done that, that's the hard work. The next thing is to create like a menu and build proposals. Send them out to clients, approach clients with something. It shows that you know what you're talking about when you've itemized what it is. It might not be what you expect. It literally might be like, hey, I'd like headset, keyboards, and a mouse for you know six months of live streaming and your logo on it. And its value is X, because you've quantified what that value is. They can determine whether that quantification is accurate or not, but you being honest and providing the best price means that those those clients will probably come back, number one. And number two, they trust you with this part of the work. You will fail. You will fail frequently. For every 10 clients that you send proposals to, maybe one will bite, but it's okay. That's normal. That's what everybody goes through. And we go through so many coffees and discussions and consultations with brands that don't really lead to anything. But at the end of the day, you just need to land one sponsor to begin with. I'm talking specifically to people that are new to the space, that are trying to get their Instagram business up or their YouTube business up. You need one sponsor off the get-go. So approach somebody that you know that's got a business that can go out on a limb for you because it might be your first client. You'll see why this is important. They might be able to contribute a little bit of finances to the project, but at the end of the day, you'll be able to give them a lot more exponential value than they would if they try to do their own marketing. You are providing a marketing solution for them by approaching somebody that you know, you've already established that trust with them. They know who you are and they know that they can trust you. Trust is such an important part of this exercise. Like I cannot begin to express to you. People are letting go of hard earned money that they're accountable to. When you are dealing with somebody in a marketing department or in a PR position, their job is sometimes on the line depending on how much value you can give them. Not to put any pressure on you and it's not your responsibility, but just being honest and being a team player in another business that you're collaborating with is essential. And I can't begin to stress that going in with that attitude will probably get you and net you more work. The next thing that you need to do is develop a report. Reports are one of the most important parts of this whole procedure. They're probably one of the most boring parts. I get it. I know you're watching this and you just thought you wanted to be a content creator and make cool things or you just wanted to stream on a Twitch, but guess what? It comes with responsibilities. This is a job at the end of the day. And one of those parts of the job that sucks is reporting, right? Invoicing and reporting. Invoicing is kind of fun because you get paid, but reporting sucks. But it's gonna help you for two reasons. Firstly, you're gonna have a good idea as to what was successful and what wasn't successful in the campaign. And you can be honest with your client. Again, honesty is so important. Tell them of all the products that they invested in you, which ones were the ones that made the biggest difference so that they know that those are the biggest value. And who knows, they might sign on again. They might actually buy out another campaign for you. And that's great. If they had objectives that they needed to meet, and this is the most important part of the early on equation, you need to make sure that you get those objectives down in the report. Like, did you meet those objectives even to a little degree? You're probably not going to meet every brief's objectives and that's normal. You don't have to beat yourself up. But at the end of the day, they want to see if those objectives were met through you. And if they need to do that again, they can rely on you to do it. But your client might not be happy and you might not be able to work with them again. And that's, that's okay. But remember, there are lots of other clients that were potentially keen to work with you. Step up and take ownership for the mistakes that you made in that last campaign. But make 
make a case study because you can take that case study through to other brands. You don't need to tell too much of the detail. Highlight one or two factors, like how many people came through from a click. That information is yours as much as it is the client's. How many people watched your video? What was the engagement rate like? Engagement rate is so important. And it's why short form video is taking over this long form video. By taking that case study to a brand new client and you've refined your next proposal based on the reports that you did for the last campaign, you can be an even more successful content creator for another brand. And even just showing the humility that you've actually learned something and that you can help teach that brand. Sometimes some companies need help being taught. This is a new space and there are people in these positions that are told to work with content creators and don't understand how to. Don't ridicule those people. They've got the job, they have a degree in marketing, but this space is so new. It's new to us. We've got to be humble as well and realize that it's new to us. And when we are working with a client, we're working as a team, we're collaborating. I don't know, Philip DeFranco? Sup, you beautiful bastards. Met him a handful of times, but I don't know him personally very well. I see a lot of the same sponsors on his channel for years. And there's a reason for that, I think. I feel that those clients trust him. They know him. He is a good steward of what they are doing for his channel and what he's doing for them through his channel. So I think reputation is extremely important and you need to uphold that by being humble, by correcting yourself, by apologizing, by working on your strengths. And it will show over the long run, you'll be stronger, better, faster when the time comes. And that's it. That's how you approach clients. It's just a matter now of actually going out and getting there. And like I said at the beginning, and I told you we'd come around back to this, there is this great moment in content creation where there are more content creators who are broadcasting and creating content for people than ever before and more people making money off of it. The celebritization of these huge people that happened like in the late 2000s, early 2010s, even 2017, 2018, like that was still happening. And to a degree, it does still happen. The vast majority of content creators that you watch on this platform and on other mediums aren't huge celebrities. We're people that are here to help you and inspire you or interesting to a degree. And that is why you consume that content. And if you can be that person for somebody else and you have got a good business model behind what you're producing, there's a very good chance this could be your job. Anyway, go out and make some cool stuff. I'm really excited to see what you've done. Share some cool things in the comments. There's another video that's over here. There's an algorithm on YouTube. This one here is best for viewer. I've clicked it. So it's different for everybody watching it. And that's you. YouTube thinks you're gonna like that. It might be cool. On this side over here, we have um, my face. And uh, if you click on that face, you can stick around and get more of these videos. Hopefully I'll be making a ton more. I'll see you guys in another video. Cheers.